That's right, this guitar really sucks. And there's a few reasons why this guitar sucks. Number one, it has the same strings on here since I made it in 2018. They're so rusty, they're just, they stay in tune because they're stuck there. Number two, the brake angle from the nut to the tuning pegs. Not very much of a slant, and that causes tuning issues. So that really sucks. Number three, the action on this thing is so high, I could drive my truck under. So in this video, we're going to take care of all those issues to this guitar, so this guitar doesn't suck anymore. Now the first thing I'm going to do with this thing is take the strings off. Now usually if I change strings on a guitar and they're not five years old, I would keep the old strings just in case I broke one or whatever I'd have a spare string. But these strings are in such bad shape, I think I'm going to throw them away. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to loosen these up some. Just like that. And we're just going to snip them. I don't think I've ever had a guitar that I've had strings on as long as this thing. So this ought to be exciting to see what this thing sounds like with new strings. It'll probably sound like it did when I first made it. This time it's going to sound even better because I'm going to tweak this guitar to even sound better with a better action and a little string tree right here and some new strings and it's going to be awesome. Well my floating bridge has been here so long it's actually stuck to the top of the box. That's kind of funny. There we go. Wow, look at that. Alright, now I have not been in this thing in over around five years. Let's see what it looks like in here. Wow, even a cobweb in there. Interesting. And here's the close-up of my handiwork from five years ago. Piezo pickup. I guess I put two screws inside for the neck. And I put two screws on the outside for the neck. Hmm. Now one thing that was making the action on this guitar really suck was the action was kind of low over here, but it was high over here. And the reason is, if you look at the frets right there and the way the neck is sitting on the box, it's pretty much flat. There's no little angle in the back here. So what I'm going to do is take the neck off and put a little shim under the back part to lift it up about an eighth of an inch so it sits up like that. And that'll give me a little better action here like it is over here. Well that thing's definitely stuck on there. I'm sure this one is too. Yes, okay. So let's see. Let's see. And there we go. And this was, looks like poplar with an oak fretboard. And there's my blocks in the back right here. So what I'm going to do is get another little piece of wood and raise this back up about an eighth of an inch higher than the front. And then I'll put the neck back on. Well, I found a piece of a cigar box insert right here that happens to be about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to cut a little piece out of this and glue it to the block in the back of the guitar. Now, because I just raised the back of the neck up an eighth of an inch and this neck wasn't designed at the time for a back angle, when I put this thing in here and try to close the box, it doesn't close because the neck wasn't designed for that. So what I need to do is trim this down a little bit in the back here so I can close the box. Well, there's nothing like trying to modify your guitar and ending up opening up a can of worms. But since I'm determined not to let this guitar suck anymore, we're going to do it. Well, I did trim this piece back down a little bit here in the back part. And let's see if it now fits in the box. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, that works. Box closes. Okay, on to the next step.
yeah now another issue I wanted to correct with this guitar is the angle that when the strings go over the nut there's not much of an angle here before the string goes into the tuning pegs here so I'm gonna put a little string retainer right here so my strings have more of a break angle underneath the nail and then to the pegs so I'm gonna make a little retainer out of this and because it's going to be hard for me to drill through this nail because of its being round on the top I'm going to take a file and flatten the top a little bit so I can drill straight through the center of this thing. I'm just going to mark the width of the nail so I can cut it like that. With my string retainer, I started with a nail like that there and ended up with this right here. You can see where I flattened it out on the top so I could put the drill the holes easier there. And I'm going to put this thing right there. Now, when I drill these two little holes here for this little string retainer, I've got my drill bit in there and I got a piece of tape there so I know not to drill past the tape because we don't want to go through the bottom of the headstock. So let me put two little holes in here. I found a couple of these little screws here that uh, usually goes in these little humbucker pickup covers right here and it fit perfect in there and I'm going to screw it right there. And that's what it looks like right there. Well, I think it's time to string this thing up. Now, the strings that I had on here were bronze wound strings, acoustic strings, and I'm going to change them to nickel wound strings, and the sizes are going to be 40, 30, and 22. So I'm going to string in, or put the last one in here, right there through the back. Now, with this type of tailpiece to through the body neck design with the tailpiece coming out of the back. When it's like that I just take the string and I kind of just flatten it and bend it down just like that. And then I'm going to feed it through the eye over here and I want about I don't know four inches of slack from the fretboard and then I'm going to wind it up on this end. I'm going to take my homemade neck rest and put it right there. I'm going to bend this up. I'm just going to take my winder and wind this one this way. Now, I made this little string tree so the string will go on the outside of this side, the outside of this side, and then one through the middle. So I got that in there. Let me add the nut here. Just like that. And now we're going to go on to the second one. Okay, I've got the strings on there. They're not that tight, but I'm going to go ahead and snip these off. And make sure these are spaced good right here. And that looks pretty good right there. Now we're going to try the bridge. Same one that we put on here, or same one that was on here, this one here. So this guitar is on a 25 inch scale length. So I'm going to put my ruler here on the middle of the nut down here and go down 25 inches. And I'm going to put the bridge right there. And now I'm going to tune it and then we're going to intonate it with this little tuner here. Okay, I'm at G. On the bottom string is G. I'm turning it to an open G. So the G is right on there, but when I hit the 12th fret, you're way sharp. So I'm going to have to move this bridge back some. Okay. Now let's retune the G string again. Low G. And let's check it at the 12th fret open 12th fret that's pretty good all right let's check the last string okay, there's the high g string right there now let's check it at the 12th fret now that one is flat this side of the bridge needs to go that way That looks good. Bottom one. 
top one. Open, 12th fret. Now the guitars I build now, like this one, which is number 456, I build with a slanted headstock. So the brake angle for the strings are already there automatically because of the angle of the headstock. Now this one here did not have the angled headstock. So by putting this little string retainer there, I was able to get a nice brake angle. And also we took the neck off and I raised the back up an eighth of an inch. But you can see a slight back angle because the strings are going upward in the back. Which makes the action really nice here and all the way down. So that is a plus. After five years I finally changed the strings and I can't believe how bright it sounds. I think we ought to plug it in and see if we can squeeze some tunes out of it. I'm going through my Line 6 Spider 15 Classic Amp back there on a clean channel with a little bit of reverb. I'm happy to say after doing some minor adjustments to this old cigar box guitar, I'm happy to say that it doesn't suck anymore. I think I'm going to enjoy playing it now. If you have an old cigar box guitar that really sucks, don't be afraid to take it apart, tweak it a little bit, and put it back together so it doesn't suck anymore. Well, if you like this video and it was helpful, well, help me out. First, click the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up and do leave a comment. Shut up, Buster. I'm doing a video. <laughs> that dog. From the backwoods, my name's Michael, and I'll see you in the next one.